In this short presentation, I will try to give you some ideas about how many Nobel Prizes are linked to it, low temperature research. To begin with, the answer is, so far 13 Nobel Prizes are directly or indirectly connected with low temperature research. So in the following slides, I will try to give you some basic ideas about these discoveries. Number one, Kamerling Ones. He got the Nobel Prize in 1913 in physics for his investigations on the properties of matter at low temperature, which late inter alia to the production of liquid helium. You know, he also discovered superconductivity in 1911. There is a general misconception that uh, Kamerling Ones got the Nobel Prize because uh, discovering superconductivity, but he got the, he received the Nobel Prize uh, for his uh, general contribution, outstanding contribution, um, properties of matter at low temperature, and in particular for the production of liquid helium. Second is uh, William Francis Guiacu, 1949 Chemistry Nobel Prize for his contribution in the field of chemical thermodynamics, particularly concerning the behavior of substances at extremely low temperatures. Number three, Donald Arthur Glaser, 1960 physics for the invention of bubble chamber. Yeah, and there is a direct, a very direct connection with the low temperature there. We, we don't often heard about this, um, uh, this bubble chamber, but this is a very important discovery and direct connection to the low temperature. Lev Davidovich Landau, number four, 1962 Physics Nobel Prize. You know, this Landau is usually, uh, he's famous uh, to his students as Dao, and he got the Nobel Prize for his pioneering theories for condensed matter, especially liquid helium. You know, Landa has many, many uh, outstanding contributions in the kind of matter physics. Yeah, so he's a great physicist. Number five, John Bardin, uh, and then Leo Nile Cooper and John Robert Schiffer, 1972 Physics Nobel Prize for their jointly discovered uh, developed theory of superconductivity and usually called the BCS theory. Yeah, this is, uh, of course, the direct connection to the low temperature research. Number six, uh, Leo Esaki and then Ivar Giaever, Brian David um, Josephson, 1973 Physics Nobel Prize. Um, Leo and Ivar uh, got the Nobel Prize, received the Nobel Prize for their experimental discoveries regarding tunneling phenomena in semiconductors and superconductors. And for Brian David Josephson, he got it um, because of the theoretical prediction. Um, of the properties of supercurrent through a tunnel barrier. Uh, nowadays, we call it as in Josephson effects. You know, you know the Josephson effects has many, many uh, technological implications also, and that was a great work and uh, direct connection, of course, with this low temperature. Number seven, this is uh, Kapitsa, yeah, Piotr uh, Leonodovich uh, Kapitsa, 1978 Physics Nobel Prize for his basic inventions and discoveries in the area of low temperature physics. You know, Kapitsa basically uh, identified this uh, superfluid state, yeah, uh, superfluid state of helium-4, so in 1938. Number eight, Kenneth Z. Wilson, 1982 Physics Nobel Prize for his theory for critical phenomena in connection with phase transition. Yeah, when we talk about phase transition, you know, in the low temperature, we have the superconductivity or we have superfluidity or many ma uh, magnetic phase transition. So the low temperature essentially gives you a very nice playground um, to, to play with this, uh, all this uh, phase transition and low temperature is an essential part there, yeah. Number nine, Klaus von Klitzing, 1985 Physics Nobel Prize for the discovery of quantized Hall effect, yeah? And you know, the measurement has been done at the very low temperature, and that was really, and also the high field and low temperature, these two things are directly connected there. So that was uh, very, that came because of this low temperature research. Number 10, yeah, George Bendros and Alex Muller, 1987 Physics Nobel Prize for their important breakthrough in the discovery of superconductivity in ceramic materials. Nowadays we call it, you know, the high-density cuprates. 
And of course, this is the low temperature thing. Number 11, uh, David M. Lee, Douglas Osher, uh, Osherof, and Robert C. Richardson, 1996 physics Nobel Prize for the discovery of superfluidity in helium-3, yeah? So, you know, helium-3 is an isotope of helium-4, so this also shows the superfluidity, yeah? Number 12, the Stephen Chu, and then Claudio Quintanoji and William D. Phillips, 1997, uh, Physics Nobel Prize for development of methods to cool and trap atoms with laser light. Usually, you know, when you talk about light, we, we, are, we are often discussing that light can only warm up the system, but uh, light can also cool down the system. And if you really cool the atom at very low temperature, yeah, then this uh, laser is very much uh, useful. And that is basically the develop this uh, concept and idea. So they uh, got it, the Nobel Prize, received the Nobel Prize in 1997 for their outstanding work. Number 13, this is Eric Cornell, uh, Wolfgang Ketterle and Carl Wieman, 2001 Physics Nobel Prize for the achievement of Bose-Einstein condensation in dilute gases of alkali atoms. And for early fundamental studies of the properties of the condensates. And it's a very low temperature phenomena, very low temperature effect, yeah. So that means so far I was trying to give you uh, basic ideas about how low temperature research, um, how low temperature research really, really contributed in the development of the science, yeah. So the question remains, however, what next, yeah? And who will be the next, yeah? So um, with this, I would like to end this uh, short presentation and thanks for your attention.